right so okay so our course name is 18 limit 430 machining process so today we are going to see super finishing process right so finishing process it is also called as a secondary process uh, normally we won't perform uh, if our final object need to be a uh, specified surface finish so if i want good surface finish then i go with the secondary process otherwise i won't go uh, for traditional primary process generally grinding is a better one uh, it gives uh, some uh, good surface finish but uh, some application it requires a very high precision surface finish so for this case we need to do some secondary process so uh, that secondary process is called as a sec super finishing process right so these are the topic we are going to discuss lapping honing super finishing polishing and the buffing okay so why we need surface finish the first thing right so to ensure reliable performance and the prolonged service life of modern machinery right so we need a good surface finish because uh, if the object if the object is to be a good performance reliable performance means it won't get any wear and any corrosion so wear it depends on the surface finish so if uh, our surface finish is very less or very poor then we can get uh, more amount of wear right so to get reliable performance and it prolonged service life of modern machineries right so uh, for generally any equipment if you change any one of the component means uh, the main reason is uh, that uh, corrosion or wear right so the corrosion and wear occur uh, due to the improper finish right so if you want a good life good life then your surface finish should be good so prolonged service life of modern machinery right and its components required to be manufactured not only with the high dimensional and geometrical accuracy but also with the high surface finish uh, which means uh, some application we need a, a high fin high surface finish so right so for this case we need to go with secondary process right the surface finish has a vital role in influencing functional characteristics like wear resistance uh, fatigue strength corrosion resistance and power loss due to frictions so this all depends on the surface finish unfortunately normal machining methods like turning milling or even classical grinding cannot meet this stringent requirement so which means uh, we will get the good surface finish uh, by grinding turning all those things but uh, some application it requires a very high surface finish for this case we need to use a grinding sorry a secondary process right so this this uh, table shows the comparisons of various surface finishes so only if you use precision turning uh, the surface finish height it may be the 1.25 to 12.5 mm micron if it is a grinding 0.9 to 5 if it is a honing 0.13 to 1.25 so uh, so the honing lapping super finishing these are the finishing process we will get approximately 0.13 to 1.25 micron level surface finish so that much level uh, that much level surface finish we can get right okay right so these are the some uh, finishing operations lapping honing super finishing polishing uh, buffing wire brushing electro polishing magnetic field assisted polishing right so we will see one by one the first one is lapping so this this is an operation used for finishing a flat uh, cylindrical or curved surfaces so uh, if the surface is to be a flat or it's cylindrical or it be curved we can do finishing by lapping the lap uh, it's a relatively soft and porous and usually it's made up of cast iron and copper leather or coal so this is uh, this is a before uh, here you, you may know that this, this is a surface peak right so uh, after lapping the surface peaks are reduced so this is a good surface finish so the first image it represents the uh, flat surfaces so finishing of flat surfaces the uh, so uh, we placed we placed our work pieces uh, from here and uh, the top of work pieces we placed our uh, lapping tool uh, it will rotate it. so based on the rotating the finishing will get so if our object is to be the cylindrical object then we need a separate types of die designs right so the yellow color it's a one of the work holding so it is used to hold cylindrical objects right so both the case uh, working principles are similar so uh, we uh, we place object so the top of the object uh, the lapping tool is placed and it is rotated right so the against uh, uh, stationary work piece so it will get the final finish it will get the good surface finish the abrasive particles either are embedded in lab or maybe are carried in the slurry so sometimes we use abrasive particles 
it may be added uh, it may be added externally or it may be uh, present into a piece itself right so it or it lap, lap into it itself so lapping of spherical objects under glass lenses done with the specially shaped lips so we need uh, special laps for different uh, specific uh, objects depending on the type and the hardness of the workpiece material lapping pressure range from 7 to 140 kilo pascal so uh, how much pressure if, if you want to give uh, in which means it depends on the workpiece material right so it may vary from 7 to 140 so dimensional tolerance you can get up to point plus or minus point zero 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 four mm so that much level dimensional accuracy you can get Similarly, uh, the surface pin is 0 0.025 to 0 0.1 micron, right? So the abrasives, generally we use the grid size are 900, right? So these are some of the cases, right? So lapping, right? The second process is, it's a honing. So it is used to remove, uh, it is used to produce good surface finish for internal surfaces or hole, right? So honing is an operation that is used to primarily to improve the surface finish of holes produced by the process such as boring drilling and the internal grinding right generally it is used to finish uh, internal surfaces the honing tool consists of set of aluminium oxide or silicon carbide bonded abrasives, abrasives sticks usually called as stones right so we have a stone right the stones the stones are connected with the uh, some of the particle like aluminium oxide or silicon carbide right so that stones are stones are connected with the mandrel and the mandrel is connected with the spindle right so they are mounted on the mandrel that rotates in the hole at the surface speed of 45 to 90 meter per minute so for every minute it will rotate 45 to 90 mm meter right so applying radial force the tool has a reciprocating axial motion which produces the cross hatcher pattern on the surface of the hole right so this is one of the examples right so uh, this is similar to our cleaning of water bottle right so internal surface of water bottle we use brushes so the same way right so we have a work part it is an internal hole so the honing tool is uh, inserted uh, between this hole and it will it can move reciprocatingly and the spring uh, that uh, stones stones are contact the uh, finish surface of the internal internal surface of the workpiece and it will get a uh, good surface right so the tool has reciprocating action motion which produces a cross hatcher pattern right so we can get the this kind of pattern uh, cross hatcher pattern uh, uh, the stones can be adjusted radially for different hole size. Uh, oil or water based honing fluid generally are used to help flush away the differences. Honing is also one minute. Right, so the stones can be adjusted radially for different hole sizes. Oil or water based honing fluid generally are used to help the flush away differences. So, honing is also done on external cylindrical or flat surface and manually remove sharp edges on cutting tools and edges. So, these are the examples of honing, right? So, honing is uh, similar to our cleaning of uh, water bottle, inside water, inside surface of water bottle, right? So, this is the uh, pictorial representation of honing, right? So, the quality of surface finish produced by the honing can be controlled by the type and the size of the abrasives used, right? So, what kind of abrasives, what type of abrasive we use based on this, uh, we can get the good surface. And the pressure is applied, the pressure applied and the speed. So, these are the, some of the criteria. A fluid is used to remove chips and to keep temperatures at a low, right. So, we use generally for, uh, we use cutting fluids, right, uh, to remove the chip as well as to reduce the temperature. So, here also we use uh, fluids. A fluid is used to remove chips and to keep temperatures at low. If if not performly, uh, performed properly, honing can produce holes that are neither straight nor cylindrical but rather in shape that are be well mounted, wavy, barrel shaped or tapered. So, honing, if you if you not performed well, the honing may uh, damage the internal surface this is what we learned right so next process is a super finishing process so this is uh, generally done uh, cylindrical objects right so we have uh, two methods one is uh, the object cylindrical object is hold with the help of two centers right so two centers the second one is if uh, centerless so the object is hold with the help of two rollers right so here we two centers as well as here two rollers Right, so in this process, the pressure is applied very light and the motion of the stone has a short stone. Right, so we have a stone and it will give the short stone. The motion of the stone is controlled so that the grains do not travel along the same path on the surface of the workpiece. Right, so the examples of external surface finish of a round part are so in figure. Right, so this is on a uh, super finishing process. So this one is a workpiece, as a, the blue color is a workpiece. It is held with the help of two centers. And the top of the workpiece we place our stones right so it, it can move oscillation if, if it requires 
so and we give the some pressure this is what the super finishing uh, if uh, the object is hold or uh, placed without centers uh, we can use a rollers one is a driver roll another is a driven roll so driver roll is connected with the motor so if you switch on your motor the driver rolls roll uh, rotates and the driven rolls are rotates and the the top of the two rolls we placed our stone right this is what a super finishing process right the next process is, is a polishing polishing process so polishing is a process that produces smooth or lustrous surface finish right so if you want a good surface polished surface means you know that it look like a mirror right so the basic mechanisms involved in the polishing process is the softening and smearing of surface layer by frictional heating developed during polishing and some very fine scale abrasive normal for the from the workpiece surface right so again uh, so if you uh, see the woodworking right so woodworking normally the woodworker woodworker will polish the wood with the help of emery paper right so somewhat emery paper or other uh, sheet that sheet it may consist some abrasive particles so uh, we, we uh, he he rub he rub the emery paper uh, at the top of the wood surface so it will get some uh, frictional heat so right so frictional heat uh, so the due to the friction as well as heating process the metal is removed and we can get the good fine finish right so we, we will get the shiny appearance the shiny appearance of polished surface result from the smearing action so smearing right uh, so polishing is done with the disc or belt made up of fabric so polishing uh, it may be the uh, fabric or leather or uh, any other uh, coated uh, aluminum oxide or diamond so it may be any material right so in double sided polishing pairs of pairs are fixed on the face of the plates that rotates horizontally and in opposite direction right uh, if it is a single pad a single pad means we place object on anvil and if we uh, the top of the object we place our polishing pair and we will uh, get we will give some smearing actions right this is a single if it is a double padding means uh, uh, the both the surface surface uh, surface of the workpiece right the, the two sides of the workpiece are placed between polishing pad right so parts with irregular shapes sharp corners deep recesses and sharp uh, sharp projection can be difficult to polish so this is this is one of the uh, limitations right so if it is a irregular shape or if it is a sharp corner then uh, we can't uh, get good surface right we can get good uh, we can't do polishing right so first one is chemical mechanical polishing so it is extremely important in semiconductor industry right so semiconductor means normally we it is uh, micro electro uh, fabrications mems mems Uh, mechanical system micro electro mechanical system so uh, they they use some micro level product so that micro level product finishing is done by the chemical mechanical polishing so this is very very simple working principles right we have a table that the table can the table uh, it may rotate right the table may rotate the top of the table we place our polishing pad and we place our work piece the work piece is hold with the help of work piece carrier uh, so if the polishing table rotates means the work piece uh, work, uh, the uh, we give the pressure right the top of the work piece we give the pressure so against pad uh, the work piece is moved so we will get the good surface finish but we add in addition to that we add some abrasive particles right so abrasive parts abrasive means it's a chemical so the polishing is done with the help of uh, rotation as well as chemical then we say it's a chemical mechanical polishing right so it is very very extremely important Uh, is a suspension of abrasive particles in a water based solution so abrasive particles uh, it is uh, it, it is a water based solution the process thus removed material from the workpiece through combined abrasion and corrosion effects the results are a surface of exponentially fine finish and a workpiece that is exponentially especially flat so generally the workpiece should be the flat one then only we will do chemical mechanical polishing for the reason the process is often referred to the chemical mechanical plan planarization a major application is the process to polishing a silicon wafers in which case of primary functions of cmb stands for chemical mechanical polishing is to polish wafer at micro level right so micro level means uh, uh, 10 power minus 6 right so generally it is used to for uh, superconducting uh, silicon wafers so silicon wafers we generally use in superconducting applications so that silicon wafers is polished uh, by chemical mechanical polishing polishing the second one is a uh, electro polishing right so uh, here we use uh, electricity right so electricity to polish uh, so we have anode and cathode and uh, if you, uh, both are immersed in the electrolyte solution if we give the power supply uh, the metal will corrode right so this is uh, this is the working principle 
again it is opposite to the electroplating right so uh, mirror like finishes can be obtained on metal surface by electropolishing a process that is the reverse of electroplating right so because there is no mechanical contact with the wood piece this process is suitable particularly for polishing irregular shapes right so all other process uh, we can do finishing if the surface should be a flat one so but uh, if my object is a irregular means uh, we go with the electro polishing the electrolyte attacks projection and the peaks on the work piece surface at a higher rate than the rest of the surface producing a smooth surface electro polishing is also used for deburring operations right so deburring operations so in grinding we see what it mean by deburring right the next one is the mechanical polishing so polishing in magnetic fields we have a two types we have a two types one is a magnetic float polishing another one is a another one is magnetic field assisted polishing right so both are uh, polished with the help of magnetic field right so magnet magnet so uh, the first one is magnetic float polishing here we place a permanent magnet right the permanent magnet the top of the permanent magnet we have a two guide rings and it is filled with the uh, it is filled with the ma magnetic fluid magnetic fluid is nothing but uh, uh, abrasive particles with the ferromagnetic particles right abrasive particles with the ferromagnetic particles uh, assume that our workpiece is a ceramic ball right so or a ceramic ball or spherical spherical type so uh, we 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 poured uh, magnetic fluid and uh, work piece and we insert uh, drive shafts right we insert the shaft and it, uh, it will rotate so the rotation as well as magnetic uh, reaction between rotation as well as magnet the work piece are uh, finished i mean uh, work finish work, work, work piece are uh, get good surface finish this is what the magnetic float polishing the second one is a magnetic field polishing so uh, the side the two sides of the work piece is placed with the south and north pole it will change us so and it is filled with the magnetic fluid the in between the magnetic uh, poles we have a work piece so if you change the polarities it will rotate right so and uh, it is connected with it is uh, immersed with the magnetic fluid also so uh, the rotation of work pieces uh, removes the material so it will get the good surface finish so magnetic float polishing is a ceramic uh, ball a magnetic fluid uh, magnetic fluid is nothing but it contains abrasive grains and the extremely fine ferromagnetic particles in carrier fluid such as water or kerosene right is filled in with the chamber within the guide ring the balls are pressed against the rotating drive shaft and are polished by the abrasive actions right the next one is a magnet magnetic field assisted polishing uh, a ceramic or steel roller is clamped and rotated on the spindle a magnetic poles are oscillated right so a magnetic pole south, south and north poles are oscillated introducing a vibratory motion to the magnetic abrasive conglomerate so this action polishes the cylindrical roller surface right so the vibration as well as magnetic uh, it will create the uh, good surface finish right the the next process is a buffing right so it is a uh, again it is similar to lapping only thing uh, the buffing wheel is connected with the some buffing component right so buffing is a finishing operation similar to polishing in which abrasive grains are not glued to the wheel but are contained in a buffing component right so instead of abrasive grains we use some buffing component that buffing components made by the lions cotton broad cloth and canvas the canvas is one kind of material right uh, that is pressed again the buffing wheel is pressed into the outside surface of the buffing wheel while it rotates as in polishing the abrasive particles must be periodically replenished so we can change this buffing is usually done manually although machines have been designed to perform process automatically generally it is done by the manually but some application we do automation right so this is what the buffing component this is our work piece so the top the top of the work piece we are going to make a finish so we uh, we use buffing wheel the buffing wheel uh, the surface of the buffing wheel is connected with the buffing component it is made by the cotton canvas or other material and we, it is rotated and it will give you some process so based on that the finishing will happen this is what a buffing right so, so right uh,